In this question, we're provided with some information about two elements, titanium and aluminium. And our goal is to figure out what kind of compound these would form and what the properties of that compound would be. So first, we're going to have a look at our table here. We're provided with the electronegativity and the atomic radius of each element, but we need to figure out their metallic character. So let's go and have a look in the periodic table. So titanium is here. Titanium is light green. That's a transition metal. So titanium is a metal. Aluminium is here. That's that really pale green color. That's also a metal. It's a post-transition metal. So both titanium and aluminium are metals. So we can fill that in first. Okay, and you'll notice both of them have similar electronegativities that are fairly low. So both of them have a similar attraction to uh, electrons. So what's an expected in a bond between titanium and aluminium? Well, since we have two metals, they're going to form a metallic bond. And the type of solid structure formed will be a metallic solid. However, we have a few types to choose from. A pure metallic solid contains one type of metal only. Here we have two metals, titanium and aluminium, so it can't be pure. The other two options are an interstitial alloy or a substitutional alloy. Interstitial alloys are formed when the uh, two metals have very different radiuses and the one with the smaller radius kind of fits in the gaps between the regular lattice of the larger metal. On the other hand, a substitutional alloy happens when the two elements have very similar radiuses. So some of the uh, metal atoms in the lattice will be of one type and some of them will be of another type but they'll just fit into the regular lattice as usual they won't be small and just fit into the gaps here titanium has an atomic radius of 176 picometers whereas aluminium has an atomic radius of 118 so titanium is quite a lot bigger than aluminium it's about one and a half times bigger so i think those are different enough radii that i'm going to say it's forming an interstitial alloy so which image would represent this? Well, you can see image A, B, and C. Those are all metals with the positively charged ions surrounded by a sea of electrons. But A and B, those contain the darker blue as well as the lighter blue positive ions, showing we've got two types of metal. But we know it has to be an interstitial alloy. And at, in A, you can see those small darker blue uh, metal positive ions fitting in the gaps between the regular lattice of the larger positively charged metal ions. So in this image, the titanium would be the larger radius represented by the light blue, and the aluminium would be represented by the smaller radius, dark blue, positively charged ions. So image A best represents this solid. Now we know that we have a metallic solid, we can answer the following questions. How strong are the interparticle forces holding this structure together? Well, we know that metals form metallic bonds, with each other, which are very strong bonds because the positively charged ions and the electrons are strongly attracted towards each other. Based on that, would we expect a high or low melting and boiling point? Because there are strong forces, we're going to have a high melting point and a high boiling point because melting and boiling involve moving those particles away from each other. And since they're strongly attracted, they don't want to move away from each other. So high melting point and high boiling point. What about conductivity? If you remember, electrical and heat conductivity are best when we have charged particles that are free to move throughout our structure and transfer that electricity or heat. And in metallic solids, you can see those electrons are delocalized. They are separated from their atoms to form ions. And those electrons are free to move around. So as a result, Metals have very good electrical and good heat conductivity because those charged particles are free to move. Finally, what about the properties exhibited under physical stress? Now, metals have this structure that's fairly organized. We've got a lattice shape. However, if we were to take a hammer and hit the structure, it would shift around 
but it would look the same in the end since everything, all those ions in the lattice are positively charged already and it's the negatively charged electrons between holding them together. So if we were to take a hammer and hit a metal, they would be able to rearrange themselves. So it would be ductile and malleable. That means that it would be kind of able to bend and stretch and move around. However, because we have an alloy and alloys have different types of uh, metals in them, here we have an interstitial alloy, those do actually get in the way of our structure. So when we try to move these atoms around, if it were hit or stretched, those would get in the way of that. So it's still fairly ductile and fairly malleable, but because of those small ions in between the regular lattice, they do get in the way, making it not quite as ductile or malleable as just a regular pure uh, metal would be. So fairly ductile and fairly malleable are the properties of this metallic solid because it's an interstitial alloy.